Uh, we now move on to questions to the Minister of Employment and Learning. And we'll start with the listed questions. And could I inform members that question five has been withdrawn? I call Mr. Sammy Wilson. Number one, please. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, um, um, with your permission, uh, I was going to group questions one and five together and ask for an, an additional minute for, for the answer. The current rate of economic inactivity in Northern Ireland, measured as a percentage of the 16 to, 20, uh, 16 to 64 working age population for the third quarter of 2013, is 27.1%. This equates to more than 315,000 um, people who are neither in work nor actively seeking employment. This compares with 21.5% in England, 20.9% in Scotland, 23% in Wales and a UK average of 21.7%. Within the overall rate, for Northern Ireland, 27% are students, 28.4% are categorised as long-term sick and disabled, 25.7% are categorised as having family commitments, 12.4% are early retirees, and the remaining 6.5% are categorised as other for reasons such as short-term illness or injury. For several decades, Northern Ireland has consistently had the highest rate of economic inactivity in the UK. Economic inactivity has not historically been influenced by economic cycles, and it is right that we now focus on tackling this long-term problem in a progressive and sustainable way. It is for this reason that the Northern Ireland Executive has made the unprecedented commitment to, to develop a strategy to tackle the difficult issue of economic inactivity. My department and the Department of Enterprise, Trade and Investment have jointly developed a strategic framework document in conjunction with several other uh, key uh, government departments and have recently launched a 12-week public consultation exercise on the proposals which will inform the, the development of the final strategy. This process will be complemented by a series of forthcoming public consultation events across Northern Ireland. The final strategy will be the only dedicated government strategy in the UK targeted specifically at addressing the major socio-economic issue of economic inactivity. I should also emphasise that this is a Northern Ireland executive initiative and it is not about welfare reform nor is it being driven uh, from Westminster or elsewhere. It is a local initiative focused on finding real solutions to help people who are inactive due to health issues or caring responsibilities to go back to work when they are ready. As students or early retirees are not a focus for the strategy. Again, I call Mr. Wilson for a supplementary. This is not a new issue. This is an issue which has persisted over 30 years through boom periods and through periods of depression as well. So it's clearly not an issue of lack of jobs, because even during boom times, this issue is not addressed. Given that it has been a long-term issue, and it's, clearly that there's, it's clear there's a, a whole f group of people who either can't work or won't work. Is it time for more consultation or is it not time for some action? And could the Minister perhaps just tell us what specific proposals he has at the moment for contemplation that will address this problem and get these resources back into productive work in the economy? I thank the member uh, for his question and, and interest in the matter, and he is right to say this has uh, been a major uh, long-term issue uh, for our economy. It's a, it's a structural issue and one that we do have to come to terms with. The member will, of, of course, as a previous minister, appreciate the realities of, that we have to go through public consultation on the, these issues. But I do think it is a, a, to the credit of, of the executive, and I do stress this was an executive-wide uh, initiative, which is part of the pro-government government, that they have realised that, that they do have to address this. And I do stress that we are the only part of the UK that are currently developing uh, such a strategy. This will be a 10-year uh, commitment um, across a number of, of government uh, departments. We will, we will need to look for additional uh, resources in due course uh, to make this a, a reality. But the manner in which we hope to take forward the initiative is through what we call a series of competitive pilots, where we want to see proposals coming forward from the community uh, and other organisations, um, where they can put in place a number of different initiatives, whether on a Northern Ireland-wide basis or a local basis, uh, and test what actually is effective and what is less effective, and then seek to scale those initiatives up across, across the board. Uh, I believe that is a very innovative way uh, in terms of, of addressing uh, this issue, and uh, I think there is a desire to see a lot more innovation in terms of what we do in Northern Ireland under devolution. Thank you. And I call Mr. Fran McCann. I am I thank the Minister uh, for his question. Uh, so far, uh, but could he tell me uh, how he intends to, uh, to, to develop measures and tackle areas of high unemployment, uh, like my own constituency of West Belfast? Well, I think the, the members, first of all, right to indicate that um, 
levels of activity will vary across uh, Northern Ireland, and there will be parts uh, of our region where there are considerable uh, concentrations. Uh, economic inactivity is a different uh, category uh, from unemployment itself, though there will be a correlation between the patterns of, of higher un unemployment levels and also uh, levels of, of, of inactivity. Um, again, I would stress to the member this is very much about um, the community coming forward with innovative uh, projects, uh, and no doubt um, that we will see a greater volume of those coming from areas where levels of, inact of inactivity are uh, most acute. Uh, already, uh, some organisations in the community, on the back of the consultation, are beginning to give thought to different types of initiatives that, that could be taken forward. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. And it's, it's most welcome that we have two government minister coming forward with this strategy. Could I ask the minister, following on from, from Pram McCann, there clearly is historical economic inactivity in Northern Ireland, but there clearly is much more cultural, historical economic inactivity in certain areas, and North West is one in particular. Could the minister outline, given the, the lack, how would the minister foresee the encouragement, the motivation to try and ensure that the business or community groups are coming forward with realistic programmes to make a difference? Um, again, the member's question is very much along the similar theme as, as the predecessors, but in terms of, of some of the, the local angles on this uh, as it relates to the North West, I can first of all uh, tell the member that there will be a very specific public consultation event to be held uh, in Derry on the 13th of March, and that will also comp um, uh, complement uh, other events being held in Dungallon on the 19th of March and in Belfast on the 26th of March. And I would encourage members and indeed um, any of their constituents and organisations in their areas to also attend uh, those events. Um, we will want to, to talk closely uh, with those organisations to try to encourage uh, proposals uh, to, to come forward. We also have a, a skills and employ employability advisor in the North West as well, um, and part of her job role can be extended to, to encourage organisations to come up with ideas. So I, I do believe we have the infrastructure in place uh, to try to encourage proposals to come forward, in particular from those most vulnerable areas, such as the, the North West. I call Ms Sandra Overend. Thank you very much, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And indeed, recent labour figures uh, have shown that the over 45s are more likely to be economically inactive here than in the rest of the UK. Is the Minister intending to uh, take any specific steps to address this trend? Well, um, I, I can stress to the member that we did publish a baseline study um, in the spring of 2013 which sets out the overall context behind our economic inactivity figures. And we will see um, a whole host of, of variations compared to what is the, the situation elsewhere in these islands, which do relate to our particular uh, circumstances. And again, I stress that uh, to make a difference, we do need to relate the type of projects that we take forward as part of, part of the strategy to the particular characteristics uh, of the economically inactive population. And hopefully that very much fits in with the thrust of the member's question. Thank you. And I call Mr. Paul Gervin. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, can I ask number question number two, please? Um, I understand the deep impact of the loss uh, of my van on its employees. Uh, my department has been proactive in determining what steps we can take to assist employees facing redundancy in order to provide them with advice and guidance regarding upskilling and alternative employment. To this end, my officials have worked closely with my van since the initial redundancy statement was announced. My department's redundancy advice service has already started delivering a tailored package of support to my, to my van staff. They are working in partnership with a range of organisations, including the Social Security Agency, Antrim Enterprise Agency, Citizens Advice Bureau, and Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs to deliver the redundancy clinics, which took place at the My Van offices on the 22nd and 29th of January. Through this service, advice has been provided on alternative job opportunities and mentoring access to training courses, entrepreneurship and careers, as well as advice on benefits and taxation. The service was delivered free of charge to all employees facing redundancy. The officials have received expressions of interest from a number of companies about exploring the possibility of redeploying affected staff. There has been liaison with Invest Northern Ireland and MyVan to ensure that these opportunities are brought to the attention of the redundant workers. Finally, my staff in the Jobs and Benefits offices will continue to engage closely with those workers affected by redundancy. This is not an approach that we have already successfully deployed to address some other significant redundancies. Notwithstanding the job losses in relation to my van, our economy is growing and unemployment is falling. The prospects for our economy are strong. 
Thank you. Paul Gervin for a supplementary. Thank, thank the Minister for his answer and appreciate the, the help and assistance that has been given, albeit quite a bit of it uh, looking at uh, redundancy and access to uh, unemployment benefits and benefits that are. Wondering in relation to the contact that has been made on an interdepartmental uh, basis between Dede and uh, his own department in trying to move forward with uh, new initiatives to actually deal with these types of problems when they arise. Uh, I thank the member uh, for his question, and he's right to highlight the importance of departments working in collaboration around this. And I believe this has been the case in relation to my van, and also the case uh, in similar uh, such tragic situations that have arisen in, in the past uh, number of, of years. Obviously, Invest Northern Ireland are an important partner in this regard in terms of looking to other um, opportunities that may arise. And obviously, we have the, the potential in relation to uh, MGM, though th that situation still has to, to, to be clarified in terms of any opportunities that may arise uh, for existing uh, staff in terms of their ability to uh, apply for new jobs that may well uh, be, be created. We also can look to the resource of our local training colleges, uh, and if the demand is there, we can put, on, put in place some specific courses to help with uh, retraining uh, opportunities. And often, whenever we, we come to these situations, we, we, we find staff who actually are very highly skilled. The difficulty has been that in the past they maybe haven't gone through the process of having their skills formally accredited, and often what is, is, is required is actually putting in place those procedures to give people the qualifications to allow them to, to sell them. To other, to, other employee, to other companies, other employers, uh, and that's something we, we are more than happy to look at. Call Mr. Danny Kinahan for a supplementary. Thank you very much, Principal Deputy Speaker, and I too would uh, like to thank the Minister for the, the help that they've been with the MyVan employees. Um, however, I wonder when he's also talking to other departments, what has he looked at in actually helping DSD in jobs and benefits and the other organisations to have more resources to actually be able to help the people? because that's been one of the difficulties that's arisen. Well, I thank the member uh, for his, his question, and um, I, I can't comment directly uh, in terms of the resourcing available uh, through the Social Security Agency, but I am aware that uh, my own um, employment service is um, well um, overstretched in terms of its current uh, resource base. Um, we are essentially resourced to deal, for example, with a JSA live load of around about 35,000. Um, the claim account uh, is, is falling at present, uh, but it is still um, just below the 60,000 mark, so there is considerable pressure, uh, pressure um, on the, the, front, the front line. And I do pay tribute um, to the, 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 uh, the work of our staff in helping people uh, in terms of giving them advice and also signposting them to, to other um, opportunities. Um, however, I mean, as and when these situations arise, and hopefully there will be a lot fewer over the, the coming months and years, um, we will be quite clear in our commitment to follow through and to put in place the type of redundancy service that we have put in place in relation to my van. Thank you. And I call Mr Jim Allister. Has the Minister any concern about how the my van situation was handled to result in the fact that none of the workers have any to pay rights because the redundancies were allowed to fall into place, and then immediately a new company comes in to take over the premises and the buildings, uh, but giving no to be rights to the existing workers. Is that not an abuse of the arrangements which should be in place? Well, in, in relation uh, to, to Chupi, I can say uh, to the, the member that we, we have had a, a public consultation on Chupi arrangements over the past uh, number of months. Um, and it is my intention to bring forward a paper to the executive in relation uh, to the future of TUPE um, in Northern Ireland. Um, this is very much in line with a, a similar exercise. Indeed, we were part of the, the consultation uh, that was conducted uh, by BIS uh, for, for Great Britain. Um, I understand the concerns that the member um, has raised um, in, in this, but obviously, if there are particular concerns uh, around how TUPE has been applied in any particular uh, situation, then the, those who are affected do have rights and the ability to, to challenge uh, the decisions that have been taking place. I can't take a view on that particular situation myself, except just, just to clarify once again that people do have recourse in the event that they feel that Chupi has not been properly applied. Thank you. And I call Mr David McNary. Um, currently, uh, matching training to jobs is addressed through a number of measures. In January, I made a statement to the Assembly to announce the findings of the review of apprenticeships. 
The review's interim report sets the blueprint for Northern Ireland's future apprenticeship programme, a model that puts employers at its very heart and matches better supply with demand. In parallel with the review of apprenticeships, a review of youth training is being undertaken to ensure that provision meets the future needs of business by developing a highly skilled workforce. This year, the Careers Review will consider how young people are encouraged to align their education, training and apprenticeships with current and future job opportunities. I'm keen to expand higher and further education places in Northern Ireland and, to date, have been able to, to negotiate funding for an additional 1,350 places. All of these additional places are in the STEM subject areas, as I believe these are key for the future of our economy. My department has worked closely with the Department of Enterprise, Trade and Investment in the production and implementation of success through STEM. And I also currently chair in ICT uh, Advanced Manufacturing and Food and Drink uh, Manufacturing, a series of working groups. And the Department of Enterprise, Trade and Investment is also represented on these bodies. The Executive is committed to an overarching review of departments, and the First Minister and the Deputy First Minister ha have indicated that they are content to await the outcome of, of this review before taking any decisions on the future of the Department for Employment and Learning. This may well see a, con a consolidation of economic functions across a number of departments uh, within the new Department of the Economy. Thank you. And I call Mr David McNary. Uh, I thank the Minister for her, her, his answer, but if we could cut to the chase. Will the Minister accept that a department responsible for training, which has resulted in 5,000 unemployed teachers, simply cannot continue to manage teacher training? Um, the, I, I'm afraid the member is ill-informed. Um, my department doesn't uh, set the teacher training numbers. We simply resource the teacher training colleges. The numbers of teachers that are allocated to teacher training is solely a matter for the Minister of Education. And I call Mr Phil Flanagan. I thank the Minister for his answers. Um, in my role as an MLA, as, as well as many others, I regularly engage with business people. And th the message I am hearing from business, particularly medium-sized businesses, is they have a, a large number of positions that they want to get filled. But then I also speak to people that actually can't find a job, highly skilled, highly qualified people that can't get a job. So can I ask the Minister how does he propose to bring those two problems together and find a solution? Well, I'm grateful to the member for putting his finger um, on what is a constant source of frustration in terms of our own economy and also in many other economies around the world, which is a, a certain mismatch between uh, supply and demand and also in terms of areas in which we are investing in training and, and up upskilling. Um, we do need to be much more efficient uh, in this regard if we are to ensure that our economy grows to its maximum and also that young people actually find themselves uh, lucrative careers and sustainable jobs. We can be much more efficient in terms of what we are doing to address this particular problem through a number of measures which I outlined in the principal answer. And in particular, I would highlight um, the review of apprenticeships. And apprenticeships are perhaps the purest way of matching uh, training uh, with uh, the needs of, of employers. And as the member knows, we're currently um, out of public consultation on the findings of the review of apprenticeships. We're currently also working on the review of youth training, which will also support interventions at, at level two. In particular, also, uh, we need to look at what we do in the universities and encourage people to study subject areas which are more likely uh, to lead uh, to secure jobs in the economy. That's why we do place such a focus upon STEM subjects. And I am pleased that we're making progress in all of those areas, but it's one where we do need to keep the work going. Thank you. And I call Mr Chris Little. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. I thank the Minister for his questions so far. Uh, can I ask the Minister to give us an update in relation to the review of apprenticeships and the role that he sees apprenticeships playing in upskilling uh, the workforce in Northern Ireland to lead to high value, sustainable employment? Well, grateful to the member's question. Um, as the member will know, last month we, we announced the outcome of the review of apprenticeships currently out for uh, public consultation. I am pleased with the response that we have received uh, to date uh, from a, a number of different uh, stakeholders. And I believe this provides a, a, an a very exciting new platform uh, for training uh, in Northern Ireland and should radically transform our skills infrastructure. There's a number of other initiatives that we are taking forward in relation to apprenticeships. Um, 
while the public consultation is underway, and those include um, work on the funding model uh, to ensure that we are uh, gathering the resources available uh, to us uh, to have the, the greatest impact in terms of um, delivering results. Also, we need to work with uh, small uh, businesses uh, in particular, and as members know, uh, we have a disproportionate uh, share of our economy uh, linked to small businesses. And it's important that we try to address the barriers that they may face in the future in terms of recruiting apprenticeships. So there's a number of different models uh, that we are developing to see how we can um, provide a mechanism to allow uh, small businesses to engage with our model. This is a problem that uh, is uniform across the world, uh, but hopefully, again, with good innovation under devolution, uh, we can find a means uh, to crack that particular problem. But bear in mind, this is a new start for Northern Ireland. We're, we're changing the apprenticeship model from a level two, level three intervention to level three, right up to level eight, and expanding this model to a whole range of new occupations. And I strongly recommend this as a major plank of our future skills offerings. Again, call Mr. Tom Buchanan. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Question number four. Our further education sector is a major asset to the Northern Ireland economy and wider society. The Department's role is to set the strategic direction for the, future the, the further education sector in Northern Ireland, to fund colleges to deliver my strategic priorities for the sector, and to monitor the extent to which colleges meet the targets they are set. Following a major process of evidence gathering and consultation, the current Further Education Means Business Strategy was agreed in 2004. The strategy confirmed the role of further, further education as being to strengthen economic and workforce development, to enhance social cohesion and to advance individual skills and learning. The objectives of FE Means Business included raising the skills and qualification levels to meet the needs of employers and the wider economy, ensuring that colleges provide, are provided, um, uh, provide an economically focused curriculum, providing support to employers, developing flexible approaches to learning and ensuring quality in keeping with best international practice, the main achievements of the strategy include the rationalisation from 16 to 6 colleges, increased enrolments, increased levels of learner achievement, which are now at 87%, and strong support to employers. We are committed to a new strategy for further education. This is at the early stages of development. However, building on successes in recent years, the vision is that colleges will have a detailed understanding of the changing needs of employers and learners that they will develop and deliver services and curriculum in an, innov an, in an innovative and ins an inspirational manner, and that they will have a strong ethos of self-improvement. I can confirm that the Department will work closely with the further education sector and with other key stakeholders in the development and Im implementation of the new strategy. Thank you, and Mr Buchanan for supplementary. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker, and I do thank the Minister for his answer, but can the Minister advise the House how he sees this strategy been different in terms of delivery from all of the other strategies already within the system? Um, I, I grifle to the, to the Member's um, question. Um, it's important that um, the House understands the full remit uh, of my department and the areas that, that we cover. Uh, in that regard, the most important of the strategies that we currently have is the skills strategy, uh, which was agreed by the executive in 2011 and sets the overall skills requirements uh, that we do need to meet um, in Northern Ireland over the course of this decade. That will, will be supported by a number of different strategies. For example, we have the higher education strategy, which looks at higher education issues. Uh, we're currently working on a, a review of apprenticeships. Um, we have a widening participation strategy about ensuring we bring people forward uh, into higher education and also further education. But within that spectrum of strategies, FE means business, which is our further education strategy, is now essentially 10 years old. And it is now time that we refresh and renew that strategy. I look to put in place a strategy that will take us forward over the next uh, 10 years. Um, I would stress, and I know the member is very uh, aware of the, the potential of further education, that this is a sector that is likely to grow over the, the course of the next uh, 10 years, and in particular as we look to develop both our, our new model of apprenticeships and also to increase the number of people who are engaging with foundation degrees, that the role of further education is going to be critical in ensuring that we are actually matching uh, the, the needs of employers with the areas in which we are investing in training and education. Thank you. Mr. Joe Byrne. For Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, I thank the Minister for his answer. Can the Minister state if the regional colleges have currently enough resources and the ability to provide STEM courses within the remit of the strategy that he is outlining? Well, I, I, it's probably 
fair to say that the, the, uh, the simple answer to that question is no. Um, I think all of the six colleges are at present um, stretched in terms of what they are doing and what we can do um, to, to assist them is something that is very much uh, to the foremost of my, of my mind. Um, the colleges um, were less affected in terms of the current uh, round uh, of, of, of uh, efficiency savings uh, during this current CSR period than some other aspects of my own department's work and indeed other aspects of the public sector. Uh, but nonetheless, they, they, they are in a, in a challenging uh, situation. And indeed, as we look to the future of, of our uh, economy, and bearing in mind what I just said to Mr uh, Buchanan, we, we will need to be mindful uh, of ensuring that we are putting in place adequate resources to the FE sector to ensure that we actually all live up to our potential in terms of the opportunities for the future and making sure we actually do indeed seize those opportunities. Okay, Mr Roy Beggs. Would the Minister advise us what engagement he has had with small to medium-sized enterprises in regards to FE means business, and in particular uh, uh, either directly or through intermediate bodies such as the Federation of Small Businesses, and how is, he, how is he going to ensure businesses that training will be provided locally and therefore minimise the pressures associated on their time and travel of staff? Well, well first of all, um, FE Means Business was developed uh, back in, in 2004, so I can't comment specifically on the nature of the engagement with the, the, the small and medium-sized enterprises uh, sector uh, back then, though no doubt it was uh, considerable. Uh, but what I can answer for is what happens today, and we do work very closely uh, with the representative bodies um, of small and medium-sized enterprises, including both uh, uh, the FSB and also NERTA in terms of, of retail, in terms of taking forward uh, our, our evolving strategies and action plans. Um, they, ha they have been represented, for example, in relation to our review of apprenticeships and the, the current uh, review of, of youth training. And indeed, as we take forward uh, our uh, review of the FE strategy, uh, they will be closely involved in that. But beyond the actual formal process of devising policy, there is an ongoing engagement with the FSB in particular in relation uh, to further education. And indeed, uh, they, they are more than happy to sponsor different types of, of, of awards, and I know a number of members have been along uh, to some of those different, different events and have seen firsthand uh, how closely a small and medium-sized enterprise does engage with colleges. And we are, in fact, trying to encourage uh, the, the FE sector has been the first point of call in terms of advice for businesses in particular around uh, some research and development activity. Thank you. And I call Mr David Hildridge. Question six. Uh, my department provides a range of programmes and services which help young people with learning disabilities move towards their employment goals. The provision covers support in adult education, careers advice and guidance, training and skills development and employment support. The career service is the first point of contact for young people through its provision of careers advice and guidance. In particular, during transition planning meetings, advisors support the young person and their parents or guardians by offering independent advice on their options, such as training or support of employment opportunities. My department's Disability Employment Service delivers tailored support to people with learning disabilities through a range of specialist services and programmes to help them to achieve their employment goals. This provision can include local disability organisations, some of whom specialise in support for people with learning disabilities. The Department is developing a new disability employment strategy in conjunction with the local disability sector. An emerging theme is a renewed focus on young people, young people with disabilities and the, the implementation of a more employment-focused transition service. Uh, the Department's adult education and skills provision give people with learning uh, disabilities additional support to help overcome uh, specific difficulties. This can include more flexible entry criteria, specialist equipment, specialist support providers or additional financial help. Under the European Social Fund programme and the Pathways to Success strategy, a number of projects are being delivered to help people to, to achieve uh, sustainable employment. The projects support a range of individuals experiencing disadvantage, including those with learning disabilities. Finally, my department works with the, the, the Children and Young People Strategic Partnership, which is a regional cross-sector strategic group of key agencies from health, social services, education, policing, housing and the voluntary and community sectors. The partnership has a transition subgroup which is addressing the issue of transitions across frontline providers. Uh, apologies, Mr Hilditch, we're out of time and it's, uh, we now must move on to 15 minutes of topical questions.
I call the Lord Morrow for topical questions. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Could I ask the Minister, in relation to a statement that he made here in the House on the 13th of May 2013, I think when he effectively brought to an end the proposed merger of Queen's University and Stranmillis, could he tell us where exactly we are on this matter at the moment, please? Well, grateful to the member for, for his question. The member will appreciate that we're currently going through um, a two-stage review of the teacher training infrastructure in Northern Ireland. We're currently in, in phase two, and the, the, the panel that has been appointed is working with the different providers in that regard. We've had a number of submissions um, received um, from a range of different um, individuals and or organizations. The issue of the Pacific merger between Queen's and Stranmellis was something I inherited whenever I assumed office back in May 2011. Um, it quickly became clear that there wasn't the necessary support in this assembly to take forward um, that merger, and um, that was essentially subsumed into the, um, the, the two-stage review of teacher training. It is uh, still the official position of the department that we would like to see the merger uh, proceed. The, the particular situation in terms of Sean Millis's position in this regard is that th their response to um, the, the two-stage review has essentially superseded their support uh, for the merger, though of course it does remain one of many scenarios that may emerge on the back of the report that I'm expecting in the spring of this year. Lord Morrow for supplementary. Well, I thank the Minister for his uh, answer, but I'm not still quite sure whether he's in support or not. Or is it, uh, I think he, he said that there was not sufficient support within this Assembly for him to proceed uh, down that road. Uh, bearing that in mind, then, uh, and I suspect, and maybe he doesn't, but I suspect then the position is as it was then, that there is still not the support for that. Do you intend then resurrecting this merger? Or what line do you intend taking, bearing in mind that you said that you feel there's not the support for this merger? Thanks. Well, back in, in November of 2011, uh, I did make clear that it was my view and the view of the department that we did believe that the merger did have significant merit and should proceed, uh, but there wasn't the support uh, to take it forward. And I, I, re I respect that, um, and members are entitled to have their opinion in that regard. However. I think we're now looking at a much bigger issue than simply the issue of the future of, of Queen's and, and Stranmillis as, as it pertains to uh, teacher education. Uh, and we do need to have a holistic view in terms of the, the entire uh, teacher training infrastructure. And that's what the current review is seeking uh, to do. Um, it is possible to imagine a whole range of different um, options that may emerge uh, from the current uh, expert panel uh, that is taking forward this issue. I can't predict whether they will recommend the Queen's Minutes issue on a standalone basis or as part uh, of a wider uh, series um, of, of options or indeed as, as a subsection of, of a much bigger uh, option. Uh, and we, that uh, remains uh, an op open question. So we will see where, where we go on, on the back of that merger, uh, on the back of that uh, report. However, I will be taking forward discussions with the different providers um, during the course uh, of the later half of this year, uh, and that will be a, a discussion without prejudice to whatever particular scen uh, scenarios we, we wish to discuss. I call Mr. Jim Allister. Can the minister tell us what is the current cost to his department's budget of providing free education for students from the Republic of Ireland in our further education colleges? The member can be patient for two seconds. I'll just hop forward to question 15, uh, which obviously we didn't quite get to as part of the, of the, the formal um, session and gets us given the precise figure. For the 2012-13 uh, academic year, uh, the figure was £7,120,887. Hopefully that's accurate enough for the member. Mr Allison, for a supplementary. Can the minister give any indication to the House? if there have been or will be any efforts to recoup any of that money from the Republic of Ireland, bearing in mind that there also is a figure of some four or five million in terms of the cost of educating Republic of Ireland students in our universities. Well, the member is, is quite right um, to draw attention uh, to th this issue. 
and uh, it is important that we encourage a, a natural flow of students um, in both directions on the island uh, of Ireland. At present, um, those flows are predominantly in one direction, which is from south to north, and it is an issue in both further education and higher education. As a, a former member of the European Parliament, the member knows well that we, we do not have any legal basis in which to, to seek to recoup those funds uh, from the Government of the Republic of, of Ireland. Um, I, I'm not sure if the member gets a, a third go as such, but let me continue with the, uh, the, the, the answer I, I was giving. We have to uh, bear, bear in mind, however, that there are some underlying causes as to why we have these discrepancies. Um, in terms of higher education, there is a, a report from IBEC and the CBI in 2011 uh, which sets out the issue well and uh, points to a number of barriers which, which are being addressed, particularly in relation to the um, recognition of, of A-level grades from Northern Ireland. We have now seen some very small progress being made, but welcome progress nonetheless, uh, in terms of the announcement by Trinity University and Dublin City uh, University uh, last week. We want to see that across the, across the board. We need to do more in terms of careers uh, advice and also uh, ensuring that people are aware of the opportunities that do lie to study in the Republic of Ireland. Whenever we look at further education, there is a particular problem in the northwest of the island, and that reflects a, a lack of equivalent level two, level three provision in, in County uh, Donegal. Around about three quarters of the flows are in that particular uh, corridor. Uh, we are having discussions um, with our counterparts in the Republic of Ireland as to how we can encourage them to better invest in their vocational training uh, opportunities uh, in that particular uh, geographical area, which in the long term will address uh, th this issue. It is also an issue that has been raised as part of the North South Ministerial Council. And can I stress for the benefit of Mr Alistair that we benefit massively from Northern Ireland's membership of the, the European Union and the sums we receive in terms of the European Social Fund, the ERDF, Horizon 2020, dwarf any distortion that we happen to see, as bad as it may be in, 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 the, in, the, immediate, in the medium term, in relation to student flows. Well, Mr. Pat Ramsey. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. It's a subject matter I was hoping not to raise again. The Minister be aware it's, it's, would be aware it's almost 12 months since the Harry McConnell report anti industrial relations with the North West College. Is, is the Minister aware, or does he find it acceptable, that the, that the college improvement team at the North West has not met? Well, in some ways, I'm, I'm pleased that Mr. Ramsey has um, raised the issue of um, the North West Re Regional College as it is becoming a, a source of, of frustration to me that we have not seen um, the, the, uh, the, the action plan being, being fully implemented. Um, but I, I do feel obliged to draw attention to where I believe the main source of the problem lies at this stage, which is the, the actions of the, the regional branch of, the, of UCU, um, which despite numerous attempts and offers, have not formally engaged with staff and taken forward uh, the action plan. I do want to stress that the North West College should be looking to have a bright new future. There have been serious industrial relations problems in the past. They have been documented well in the McConnell report. Uh, and it's important that we move past those as quickly as we can because, as the member knows, uh, the economy in the North West does need a particular uh, revitalisation and the college has to be a key partner in that regard. And the longer this goes on, it is my concern uh, that this becomes a distraction from what should be the real job of the college in terms of supporting the young people of the North West and employers. Mr. Pat Ramsey for supplementary. Yeah, and I accept some of the points that the Minister makes in terms of going forward, but I would ask the Minister now that it is essential, and he's getting a one way traffic in terms of his information on the Board of Governors. The Board of Governors unilaterally changed the College Action Plan without any discussion with any other membership body or trade union movement within the College. Does the Minister find that acceptable, or is it not a case where he should be intervening once again in the College Industrial Relations? I think it's important to stress that it is the job of the governing body to run the college. Um, I have confidence in, in the governing body, and as the member knows, that we are going through a transition in relation uh, to, to the chair. I am meeting with the acting chair um, on Friday uh, of this week to discuss um, the, the college, and in particular uh, the issues that the member uh, will, will be aware of. But I reiterate, I believe that fundamental to moving the college forward is the local uh, UCU uh, branch engaging uh, with uh, the staff in, uh, in terms of uh, the delivery and implementation of the action plan. I call Ms Sandra over. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. The unfortunate uh, situation with regards to teacher Catherine Seeley and the boys' model highlights the, real the reality that if we are moving to a more normal society, uh, there will be new normals, including members of uh, one traditional uh, community becoming embedded in another. Uh, in another. Given the Minister's role in teacher training, could he tell the House of his current stance on the continuing requirement that teachers can only be appointed uh, to teach in a Catholic maintained nursery school or primary school if they hold a Catholic certificate in RE? Well, I am grateful to the member uh, for her question. I mean, it, it, it barely relates to my own direct responsibilities as Minister as the matters she has outlined uh, are primarily responsibilities uh, for the, the Minister um, of, of Education. But what I would stress is I want to see a situation where any teacher, a teacher who is professionally uh, trained, is capable of teaching in any type of school, irrespective of his or her own particular background, whether that's political, re religious, uh, gender, sexual orientation, disability, uh, or, or any other type of, of, of situation uh, that uh, people wish, wish to consider. That is, sh what is what should be the norm in a, in a healthy, uh, modern uh, society. Some of the particular issues that I do want to take forward uh, as part of the current uh, review of teacher training is looking at some of the entry requirements uh, to the, the, um, the, the, the colleges, um, and in particular trying to address th this an anomaly uh, that St Mary's are not using uh, the UCAS system for admitting uh, its students, whereas uh, Stromanus and the others are using UCAS, and that gives some students almost like a, a second bite at the cherry in terms of, of trying to get uh, access to a precious uh, teacher training post. We also need to look at the, uh, at the issue around uh, the, the anomalies in terms of, of fair access uh, to the, the Certificate of Religious Education. There is a wider issue in terms of whether that should be, itself be used uh, as a requirement in terms of, of, of employment. And that's something that should be considered by the Office of First Minister and Deputy First Minister alongside the Minister of Education as an equality issue. Uh, but in terms of my own responsibilities, I want to see a level playing field in terms of access to the certificate. Ms. Overland for a supplementary. Thank you very much, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And indeed, in April 2013, this Assembly uh, passed an Ulster Unionist motion calling for an end to an exception to fair employment law, which stated uh, allowing discrimination on the grounds of religious belief when appointing teachers. Um, the Minister has mentioned some of, of the ideals where he wants to see. What, what progress does the Minister hope to achieve before the end of his term? Well, First of all, just reiterate, reiterate, reiterate again my own personal uh, support for that motion that was, that was taken forward, and hopefully that will come to fruition um, in terms of other, other channels in, 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 in the near future. Um, in terms of my own responsibilities, uh, as part of the, the stage two of the re review of the teacher training infrastructure, I do want to see those issues regarding um, equality uh, addressed. Um, we have acknowledged them in the past. Uh, I believe they are uh, ongoing issues of, of concern, and indeed a, there is a sense of grievance in relation uh, to those. And I do believe that they do need to be, to, to be overcome uh, in, some, in some manner, and I will be putting them on the agenda for our future discussions with the different providers. Thank you. And I call Mr. Sammy Douglas. Speaker, uh, with growing opportunities uh, for welding jobs in both uh, Northern Ireland and indeed offshore, sure, would the Minister be aware that there is currently a lack of provision to train or upskill welders to European standards, i.e. the 9606 appro approval system for quoted welders? Um, well, I, th I thank the member uh, for his, his question. And, uh, I appreciate the concern that has been voiced in relation to some perceived um, opportunities that have been missed in the past uh, n number of months. Um, we are moving to a situation where our training programmes are much more de demand-led than has been the case in the past. And in particular, our uh, review of apprenticeships and youth training uh, are designed to ensure that we have a much purer form of demand-led uh, led provision. Um, and in particular, if we are seeing um, requirements for more investment in terms of particular welding skills and within that welding uh, there will be different standards that people can be trained to and different situations particularly the offshore uh, welding where different types of training are, are, are required and I do give the member a, a, a commitment that um, our infrastructure will respond uh, to the needs of industry and we're happy to have further discussions with the member or indeed anyone who wants to come and have a meeting with myself uh, to raise their concerns so we can work through how we can actually address that and I would say post anyone to our Skills Solutions Service as being the first point of call for having a, a discussion at, at employer level. Thank you. And uh, our time is up. Uh, 